hello fellow Detroit Tigers and baseball fans, and these are my thoughts on the upcoming 2017 Detroit Tigers season. So let's begin, shall we? I believe the Tigers are going to finish around the 500 mark, um, give or take a game or two. Uh, I don't think that they're going to beat the Cleveland Indians in their division, maybe not even the Royals. Um, I do believe that they are they're gonna they can beat the White Sox and Twins, but I know that they cannot beat the Indians, and they're right around the same mark as the Royals. Yes, the Royals traded um, got, traded a few of their good players, but they're also still a very young team. Uh, they're Pitching is questionable now, which has actually been a strong suit for them. But I think they're still right around where the Tigers. So the Tigers could end up second or third. I'm sinking third, but not too far behind. I believe the Tigers are the 10th best team in the American League. That's what I think. I believe that they are ahead of the Minnesota Twins, Oakland Athletics, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, Tampa Bay Rays, and, um, hmm, what was the other team that I saw the Oh, yeah, the White Sox. <laughs> I believe that they're better than those five teams. A lot of people might argue the Angels, but with their destroyed, desolate farm system, no. They may have a good major league roster. That is it. They have nothing else. <laughs> they're, oh, there are, they are not in a good position, but... And how many teams from each league make it to the playoffs? Five. The three division leaders and the two wild cards. And if the Tigers are the 10th best team in the American League, that does not bode well for them to make the playoffs. There are many teams, many better teams ahead of them. The Tigers are... they Now, I'm not saying the Tigers can't do anything. Tigers might be a great team next year. It's possible. They still have some decent... They still have a decent roster. I mean, there are some players that shouldn't be on the roster. Mike Pelfrey, Mark Lowe, Anibal Sanchez. But can't really do anything about that. I'm not, one, I'm not like a kind of person. I'm not like a jerk that goes like saying these players are worthless and they need to go F off and stuff like that. Um, I'm not one to do that. I always give players the benefit of the doubt and stuff like I like the Mike Avila signing um, of course he didn't do well so uh, he, that didn't work out but he was a great teammate and that actually helps a team uh, even if they're not a great player if they're a great teammate that can actually help the team quite a bit and the Tigers seem to have a pretty good clubhouse that's a very good that's a good start you need to have a good clubhouse then uh, the Tigers have that. So that's one good positive for the Tigers. And possibly players like Pelfrey, Sanchez, Lowe. Never heard anything bad about them. So as long as they're good teammates, uh, it does help a little bit. But you could also get a better, t you could get a good teammate who's actually a good player. So there are some players on the team that I think should probably go, but with the way they're getting paid, because the Tigers cannot stop giving out money when they really should, it's not going to happen. You have... Malfomer is going to be in the rotation. The starting rotation will probably be Verlander, who's, op who's going to be opening day, Jordan Zimmerman, if he's not hurt. Which he says he's past his injuries, but... Well, only time will tell. Michael Falmer are going to be in the rotation. The rest is kind of up for grabs. Daniel Norris has a good shot. But you still have Pelfrey, who's going to be making like eight, like six million or something next year. Anibal Sanchez, who's going to be making like twelve or eight or something like that, right around there, a lot. And you also have Matt Boyd, who deserves it more than those two. But Boyd's not going to make it into the starting rotation because of the higher paid pairs, higher paid players. Even though he deserves it, but no, it's not going to happen because Sanchez and Pelfrey get paid a ton more. So, even though they are not as good. So, that's going to suck. It's probably going to be Sanchez, more than likely. Might Matt Boyd do a Drew Smiley, go to the bullpen for a bit? Maybe. That would be nice. I mean, if he can actually perform like Drew Smiley did in the bullpen, that would be pretty cool. 
But I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think... I don't see that happening. Boyd doesn't really have the uh, same kind of stuff that Drew Smiley did. But, who knows. The bullpen... I don't know. You still have Mark Lowe. Mm -hmm. Who had an ERA above 7 or 8 last year. 7 or 8. And he pitched a full season. That's one of the worst ERAs for a reliever pitching a full season in like I think like just about his in like history. I could be totally wrong about that. I might just be pulling that out of a hat. But you can't have a reliever with a 7 or 8 ERA a, like pitching 50 games. You can't have that. Yes, he had a better ERA down the stretch, but he was also pitching in games when the Tigers were losing like 10 nothing or something like that. Like when they were losing by a lot, then he would pitch a game. Still have K Rod as the closer, which isn't a bad thing. He he was a solid closer last year. He had his he had his blips, yes. Every closer does. You can't blame him for that. I I love the people that are like K Rod was uh, like an incredibly solid closer, and everybody's like get rid of him. I'd love to see those people go do what he did, or everybody like this is Jose Valverde. Yes, 2012 was not a good year for him, but it actually was solid. The year before that, he was perfect in save situation. Then the year before that, he was an all-star. So, people, just shut up, please, uh, about Jose Valverde sucking. And Todd Jones sucking, too. He was a very solid closer for the Tigers. So, But that's another topic. Uh, but 2017 for the Tigers. Keep saying but a lot. And they re-signed Alex Avila to be the backup to James McCannon. <laughs> The, the McCannon, uh, but I, mean, James, I like James McCann. Solid defensive catcher. He's going to get better offensively. He has power, so that helps out right there. I don't know why people didn't like the Alex Avila signing. He's very familiar with the pitching staff. He's a good defensive catcher. He's good at throwing out runners, and he has some pop in his bat. He also has gets on base. He walks quite a bit. Does he hit much? No, but I don't know why people are crying so much about the Alex Avila signing, and he is a left-handed bat. Would I like to see John Hicks as a backup? Yeah, he deserves a chance. But I don't mind the Alex Avila signing one bit. The infield, that's a little bit interesting. You still have Cabrera at first, Kindler at second, Castiano at third, and possibly Iglesias at shortstop at this point in time. Because you have Dixon Machado also, who is out of options. You also have Andrew Romine. Dixon Machado deserves to be on the Major League roster, and I don't want him to be on another team's Major League roster. I want to see him on the Tigers' Major League roster. Him and Iglesias are very similar players, but I think Machado will be the better player. Just because he might not hit for as much of an average, but he has a bit more power than Iglesias and speed. But they're both great defensively. The Tiger San Diego Padres were about to... They were like, we want Jose Iglesias for, I think it was Travis Jankowski, uh, who was a center fielder who had a ton of speed, and the Tigers were like, no. Nah. Okay, first of all, you needed a center fielder at that time. We got Mikey Matuk, which is, I think, going to be a pretty decent trade. Uh, but are you serious? You, the Tiger, Al, Al Avila talked about how much he loves Dixon Machado and deserves to, and he is ready for the major leagues. You had a trade lined up, a good trade. Jankowski's still young, under team control for a while, tons of speed, good center fielder. But you just threw that all away because just like, nah, we're not going to make a trade because whatever. That's very annoying. Uh, I mean, probably should get more than Jankowski for Iglesias, I would think. Maybe like a throw in a fringe prospect. Not a top prospect by any means, but a fringe prospect. Uh like a 26-year-old at double-A. Just throw, just give us somebody. You never know. A 26-year-old at double-A could turn into a good player. It's very possible. Um, but, no. it's That's very annoying. But I did a video on would they trade Andrew Romine and put Machado in his spot. It's I could see that happening, but also it's kind of like a, I would say, a 50-50 shot. So... 
Dixie Machado might not be in the Tigers organization, which is the dumbest thing ever, just like Stephen Moya in the outfield. A team might not take him on waivers because of uh, defensive issues, and he hasn't shown much at the major league level, but he's still young, still has tons and tons of power, and an incredibly strong throwing arm. But I'm going to throw that all away just for Justin Upton. <laughs> if Justin Upton can perform like he did in the last couple months of last year uh, through 2017, that would be great. That's not going to happen. I see him like hitting. I see him hitting maybe 245, 250 with 20, 25 home runs, maybe like 10 stolen bases. Just don't see him performing much. And he didn't do great defensively last year when that's one of his strong suits. So, uh, just the Tigers are not going to do very well in 2017 and beyond. So if the Tigers keep going at their current route, it might be another 1990s Tigers or early 2000s. Because that's what they kept doing after the 84 World Series. They wouldn't really go with a lot of their younger players. They just kept getting veterans. And look where that got them. You had the 1990s and the early 2000s. And it looks like that might happen again. Might. It very well might not, but there's a good chance. I mean, you're probably not going to get another 2003. Let's hope not. But you could be basement dwellers for a few years. The Tigers could be fourths and fifths for a few years. Could have uh, several years of 2008 Tigers or 2015 Tigers in a row. I don't think it'd be as bad as the 90s or early 2000s, but it's not looking good. The Tigers farm system, according to Keith Law of Baseball America, uh, this year it's ranked 24th, uh, the farm system. So, that's actually better. It, act it actually has gotten better, but it's still bottom 10. And it's just one out of the bottom five. So it's still really not that good. The, it's the lower part of the farm system that's better. And I think what the Tigers are thinking is that they keep going at their current rate to Major League level right now, those prospects in the bottom will be ready to compete in the Major Leagues. That's my thinking of what they're trying to accomplish. I don't see it really working, but we'll see. They do have a lot of good prospects at in the Gulf Coast League, Short season and low A. But high A, Lakeland, double A, Erie, and triple A, Toledo, they're the few, but they're few and far between. And now with double A and triple A, it's mostly these minor league veterans they signed, they signed where a few of them are actually uh, probably not going to be that bad. But a lot of them are just players that wanted a, another chance that probably most of them won't even be in the organization by the end of May or June. That's what happens with a lot of these veteran minor league signings. They get released at the end of April or May, and they're gone by June. That happens quite a bit. There are a few that are very interesting that they signed. Um, <clears throat> can't think of their names right now, but there's like a 23 or 24-year-old third baseman they signed. Uh, former first-round pick Zach Cox, who's 27, uh, he's an infielder. That's an interesting pick. There was another uh, third ba young third baseman they signed. Uh, the first one I was talking about... Oh, yeah, they brought in Michael Almanzar. Uh, he's like 27, third baseman. He's um, That's in that's an intriguing... He's an intriguing prospect. But the other guy, uh, the other third baseman who... Dang it, I can't think of his name right now. Sorry. He was from the Padres organization, I believe. And he's only 23, 24, believe 24, plays third base, and he has a lot of power. To me, he's similar to Jeffrey Marte. Uh, a lot of people might not remember Jeffrey Marte. He played for the Tigers in uh, 2015. He was a minor league signing, and I, when they signed him and I seen his minor league numbers, I told myself that he's going to play for the Tigers in 2015, and he did. Didn't do great, but he showed power. Uh, he can play the corner infield. Uh, he was traded to the Angels after 2015 for 
uh, Cody Eaves, who is a uh, minor league infield prospect, who is actually the uh, the best way I could think about to say he's a poor man's Jacoby Jones. He has a lot of the same skill set, just not as um, advanced as Jones, but he's still a decent prospect. He's not ranked, at least not yet. He might be later, but as of right now, he's not ranked. But he's still a decent prospect at Double A. Might be at Triple A uh, this coming season. But kind of got off topic there uh, a little bit. But 2017 Tigers, it's going to be very interesting. 2016 was a roller coaster of a season, and I see that happening again. But I see the Tigers going more downhill than I do see them uphill. Might I be totally wrong? Of course. Anything can happen in baseball. Tigers could go out and win the World Series. That is unlikely, very, very unlikely. But I also don't see them like finishing horribly. I see them finishing probably right around third. I think they're going to be like right next to Kansas City in terms of the division. So uh, shuffle back between second and third between Can- with Kansas City. And... <clears throat> Kansas City did just lose their starting pitcher, Jordano Ventura. Uh, So that's very unfortunate, and that hurts Kansas City quite a bit in terms of pitching. Um, But I still see Kansas City being a very good team. Uh, So it's going to be a very interesting season. There might have been some points I missed out on that... Probably, but I'm just going off the top of my head right now. I just wanted to share my thoughts on this upcoming season. Hopefully it's not a disaster, but I do see them making trades at the trade deadline. Oh yeah, this is one thing I wanted to say. It pains me to say it, but the Tigers can take a page out of the New York Yankees notebook. And I say that because in 2016, the Yankees at the trade deadline, where I believe in fourth place in their division, still above 500, Uh, and they had veterans and uh, young players sprinkled across the roster, but they knew that they were out of it. So they traded away Aroldis Chapman, Andrew Miller, and Carlos Beltran, three very good veterans, possibly one Hall of Famer in there in Beltran. They traded those three. They had one of the bottom five ranked farm systems in baseball. With those three trades, they became possibly the best farm system in baseball. From like, I think they were like 27th to 1st or 2nd because of those three trades. And then their major league roster after those three trades, and they brought up younger players, performed phenomenally, and they almost made the postseason. They almost made the playoffs. Now, that might that seems unlikely, and yes, that doesn't really happen very often, but the Yankees, and it pains me to say this too, were smart about what they did. They traded three of their veteran players, acquired tons of amazing um, minor league talent to boost their farm system, brought some of their minor leaguers up, and performed fantastic down the stretch. They still have some veterans on the roster that have, that are performing, and they have a very good they have a very good mix of veterans and young players on their team. And with Mark Teixeira retiring, they're going to have even more. Greg Bird, who had a very phenomenal rookie year in 2015 and missed all of 2016, probably be there at first with Tyler Austin, and they're also going to have Aaron Judge in the outfield. So, but they also still have a lot of veterans and. Jacoby Ellsbury, they still have Brett Gardner's, um, Chase Headley, Brian McCann is helping Gary Sanchez mature. So the Yankees, <sighs> pains me to say it, but they were incredibly smart, and the Tigers need to look at that. So that's all I have for this. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was me just rambling on for like 20 minutes. Uh, but I love the Tigers in baseball, so I could talk about this for hours on end. I probably could. Uh, like to hear your guys' thoughts uh, down below. If you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, uh, that's fine. Uh, everyone has their own opinions. 
Uh, I'd love to see, and I, I will say, I'd love this. Of course, I want to see the Tigers win the World Series. Of course, I want to see them do it. But I don't think it's going to happen with this current roster. They did phenomenal, but they just couldn't get to that one spot. Mostly because they couldn't run. If they were able to run more in the, like, 2011, 2012, when they went to the World Series and such and such, they were able to run more. I think it would have been a different story. But they had base pass cloggers, and that just didn't really help. I think that was really one of the main reasons. So, And, of course, the bullpen. But that's another story. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and when I like and share the video, and if you want to see more content, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.